Hi everyone, it's Tyler here. When Windows Server 2008 was released, I received a lot of questions from my customers about the new Windows Server Backup feature. They were pretty upset by the fact that a system state backup taken with NT Backup in Windows 2003 might be under 2 gig, but in Server 2008 utilizing the new Windows Server Backup, that same system state could be much larger than even 10 gigs. Now while it's true the size has increased, there's a new option for backing up your servers that should alleviate those concerns. This option was introduced in 2008, but I'm finding a lot of people still are still not aware that it exists. So what I'm going to show you is how to configure Windows Server Backup to continually back up your server. And best of all, once you configure it, you forget about it. It's always going to be running in the background. It's called Automatic Disk Usage Management, and it's really easy to set up. Then I'll show you various methods to perform a restore. So the requirements to get this up and running really are Windows Server 2008 or 2008 R2 a dedicated partition and the Windows Server Backup feature. So if you go ahead and open Server Manager, under Storage and Disk Management, you can see that basically I have this unallocated disk sitting and waiting. Uh, this is what's going to be utilized by Windows Server Backup to perform the backups too. Um, we want to make sure that this has been initialized. So what I'm going to do is click on this guy, right click, initialize the disk, and go ahead and say OK to that. If you have to online the disk first, sometimes that's the case, go ahead and right click and online the disk. Uh, I don't need to do that. Now, this backup partition can be a separate partition on the same physical disk you already have, or it can be introduced as a separate physical disk. It really makes no difference. Next up, we're going to go up to Features, and we're going to install the Windows Server Backup feature. So go ahead and hit Add Features. We'll scroll all the way to the bottom and choose Windows Server Backup Features. Uh, you can install the command line tools if you wish, though they're not part of what we're going to be utilizing in this demo. Looks like that's all done. Next thing we're going to do is head up to Windows Server Backup under Storage. So if you haven't been into the Windows Server Backup utility, it's not going to look familiar to you if you were expecting Windows NT Backup. Uh, so no worries there. What we're going to do is head up and choose a backup schedule. On the Getting Started page, just click Next. Now you have different options. If you want to choose different files and folders or just the system state to be backed up, you can do that. Because this is my domain controller, what I'm going to be doing here is a full server backup. I'll click Next to that. Choose the specified time of day that you guys want to perform the backup. I'm going to grab quite a few of these backups for the purposes of this demonstration. Click Next. Now, the top radio button is the key to what we're trying to set up here. It says we're going to back up to a hard disk that is dedicated for backups, and that is what we're going to be doing. If you were to choose backup to a volume or backup to a shared network folder, this would be a normal system state backup, and again, it could be large. Uh, we're going to choose the top radio button, though. Click Next. Next, we've got to select the disk that we're trying to grab, so choose Show All Available Disks. Select the disk that we have installed that is not allocated. Click OK and do that one more time here and click next. It basically warns us at this stage that it's going to format that disk and it's going to hijack that disk for backup so we're going to let it do that and choose yes. Great, click finish. And it looks like that's all done so we'll hit close. Once that schedule wizard completes, what you can do is in Windows Server Backup, scroll down to the bottom, and you can go ahead and see the schedule of when those backups are to occur. As you can see right now, the partition that we allocated has about 30 gig available, zero use space, and zero copies. Now, as each one of these backups completes, these numbers are obviously going to change, and I'll explain those once those do complete. But in the meantime, if you go off to Disk Management, you can take a look and see the partition that's been created by Windows Server Backup and this is going to be used and run by Windows. This is the set it and forget it part. You'll never need to modify this partition or change this partition. Uh, and for those of you wondering, it is a hidden partition. If you open Windows Explorer, go to my computer down here, you can see that only my C drive is uh, available and that is by design. So what I'm going to do is go back to Windows Server Backup. I'm going to fast forward my demo in time after these backups have occurred to continue on with the demo. 
So now some time has passed and one of my backups has completed. You can see down in the bottom right hand corner here under destination usage, uh, my capacity remains the same. I have now used roughly 9 gigs of space and I have one copy available. I'm going to let some time pass and have these other backups complete and we'll come back to this. So what we can see is my first backup that's listed here, it's successful, and now my second backup that's been scheduled is in progress. So as you can see, both of my backups have completed successfully. Now, it's worth a mention that both of these backups are full backups from which to restore from. So if they are full backups, logic would dictate that each one of these backups would consume that 8.86 gig, or whatever it was, for a total of roughly 18 gigs. However, that's not the case, and this is where Windows Server Backup really shines. What's happened here is the Windows Server Backup has analyzed just the changes that have taken place on my system since the first backup, and at a block level, decided to back up only those changes for my second full backup. If I scroll down here, that's a little more obvious. You can see under my capacity, it's still 30 gig. I've used now just over that 8.86 gig, and I have two copies available. If I click View Details, that becomes a little bit more obvious. You can see I've got two backups, two copies, here they are listed. My total drive capacity, total space used. My backup items is that original 8.86 gig. And then we've got roughly 30 meg of differential changes that have happened. Now Windows Server Backup will continue taking these full backups on that drive until you stop or change the schedule. It completely manages the volume for you, so when it fills that 30 gigs that I've allocated for it, it will simply wrap the volume, kind of like a circular log would do. All the while, it'll keep every file that it needs to completely restore any one of the full backups that I have on this system. So what that means is you could potentially, or theoretically, get hundreds of full backups to a small backup partition such as this one. Now I hear you already, you're saying, Tyler, my third-party backup software already does this. To which I'm going to respond, great, keep using that backup software. Add this as a safety net. Kind of like a safety net that doesn't require you to drum up old tapes from your off-site tape storage location. Or a safety net that requires no access to your backup staff or your backup software. You get the idea. It's just there and it always runs. Alright, so a couple of days have passed, which means I should have plenty of backups to work with. Let's go launch Windows Server Backup and take a look at how many backups I've taken. You can see here, if I click the View Details button, I've got quite a few backups that are stored. I've got 22 separate system state backups, and I'm really only using about 10 gig of my 30 gig drive. Before I show you how to perform a system state restore, I want to point out that a one-off manual backup at this point is also very easy. Let's say you were getting ready to extend your schema and you wanted to back up a couple of domain controllers before you performed the extension. All you've got to do is launch Windows Server Backup and select the Backup Once link up here and follow the wizard. This backup will utilize the very same method of backup and because of that it'll be very quick. Okay, now for the recovery. We've got a couple of different options on how to do this. We can recover from the GUI either in full Windows or safe mode, or if your server is a domain controller, you can have to boot to directory services restore mode or DSRM, and you can just follow the recover wizard uh, by clicking the recover button here. We've also got another option by utilizing the command line in WB admin. So to recover from the command line using wbadmin, go ahead and launch the command prompt and type in wbadmin forward slash question mark to get an idea of what we can do. Now, the option we're going to be utilizing is start system state recovery. But before we do that, we have to get the version of the backup, because we have many on this system, to restore from. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and type in wbadmin get versions. What's listed in front of us is every single backup that's been taken on this system to that backup partition. And they're just slightly separated by one empty line. So this is a backup, this is a backup, that's a backup. You get the idea. I'm going to be recovering specifically this most recent backup. To perform that recovery, all we've got to do is type in wbadmin start system state recovery dash the version of the version of backup we want to recover from. Go ahead and hit enter. Now at this point if I were to hit yes it would finish off the recovery and away we go. But I'm going to hit no instead 
and show you a different method from which to restore. Let's imagine we don't have access to our computer. It's in such a bad shape that we can't get access to the GUI and we can't even get access to the command prompt. If that were to happen, you can actually use the recovery console that's built into Windows 2008 to restore from. So what I'm going to do to make that happen is shut down and while the machine boots, continually tap F8 to get that boot options menu. Okay, after typing F8 constantly during the boot process, you can see that I'm given the advanced boot options. So if this was a catastrophic failure of our server, the repair your computer or the recovery console is where we're going to go to perform our restore. Now don't worry if you didn't install this, it is there by default for server 2008 and server 2008 R2. I'm going to go ahead and click it, hit enter there. I'm going to select my language, click Next. Now you've got to enter the local password of the administrator. Okay, this may, may look a little new or a little foreign to some of you, but basically all we're going to do is click the System Image Recovery link here. You can see that it's taking a look for any disks that we have on our server. Okay, so you can see Windows has detected my last valid backup of this server. If I were to just click next here, it would take me through the wizard. If this isn't the backup that you want to restore, however, you can select a different system image. Select the volume you're trying to restore and click next. And as you can see here, every single one of the backups, those 22 backups that I have listed, are, or I have taken, are listed here. I could go ahead and click next and finish the wizard. But I'm going to back out and just apply the latest image that Windows has detected click next. As you can see I've got a few different options here. I could install drivers and look for backups on a different volume or I can click advanced here for a couple other options but I'm going to leave these as default and click next. We get a bit of a summary as to what's going to be done. You can see the date and time of my last backup for the computer and the volume it's restoring. We'll hit finish and go ahead and click yes. Once this completes, I'll reboot my server and it will be back to the way it was in the backup. So as you can see, my server's back online and it seems to be working properly. That's really all there is to it. I hope you found this information useful and maybe in the future you'll even make sure your 2008 and 2008 R2 servers have a dedicated backup partition so you can do easy restores and easy backups. Thanks for watching guys.